Howdy guys and welcome back to the channel and as you can see you are not staring at my desktop we are actually in a photo studio today. Um, if you're new here my name is Ben and I usually make videos teaching photo uh, retouching and photo editing in Affinity Photo but today I thought it'd be interesting to start talking about shooting in a studio. So if you've watched my channel for a while you've seen a lot of my work as I've taught techniques on retouching and editing and I thought it'd be kind of interesting to start showing you guys how I actually take those photos and since I'm a majority of those photos actually take place in a photo studio, uh, actually mainly this one, uh, I thought this would be a great place to start. But don't worry, I'm still going to be making videos about Affinity Photo. Uh, so with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the basics of shooting in a photo studio. So this video is mainly aimed at people who have never shot in a photo studio before or have limited experience shooting one. You know, maybe you've never had the opportunity to shoot in a photo studio, or maybe you've been a little bit intimidated by shooting in a photo studio. So I hope that by the end of this video, you'll have a basic understanding of the equipment that you'll find in a photo studio and how to use it. So that way you can go in with a lot more confidence. So with that being said, why shoot in a photo studio? Personally, I like having total control over my lighting. Now, of course, you can take fantastic portraits outdoors, but you don't necessarily have total control over the sun. Where in a photo studio, you have complete control over your lighting. And to be honest, that can be intimidating. Other factors that I prefer as well is, you know, when you're outside, you've got to worry about the weather. There's other people around. There's noise. It can be hot, cold, sweaty. Where in a photo studio, you're in a controlled environment. You have total privacy. So you just have a lot more freedom, I think, to, you know, get a certain look with lighting, modifiers, etc. So let's talk about the kind of lighting you're going to most commonly see in a photo studio. I think the most common lighting you're going to find in a photo studio will be flashes or strobes, just kind of like these. Now, some studios will have LED lighting, but I think that strobe lighting will be quite common for quite a while, mainly because of the power that you can get in a relatively small size. So with that being said, we're, today we're mainly going to be talking about strobe lighting. So before we start talking about lighting, let's go over our camera settings real quick. These are going to be very important when you're shooting in a studio. Um, for the most part, you're going to want to have your camera at its lowest native ISO. Uh, for my camera, which is a Nikon D750, that is ISO 100. Next is your shutter speed. Because we're using strobes, which are going to sync to our camera, uh, most strobes kind of max out at about 1 200th of a second. Some might do 1 250, but 1 200 is a good place to have your shutter speed. If you were to go faster than that, like say, you know, 1 600, 1 1000th, you're going to see that the light is kind of being like cut off in your image or the shutter speed is kind of too fast and you kind of get like half the image exposed or half the image lit. So if you keep your shutter speed at 1 200th of a second, you're going to be safe for pretty much all strobe work. And then after that is of course your aperture. Now, because we're shooting in a photo studio and I'm usually using a gray backdrop like this, I'm not worried about, you know, getting cool bokeh or anything or blurring out the background because you're not gonna see anything anyways. So I'm always usually shooting at between f5.6 and f8. And another reason is that most lenses are gonna be their sharpest around that middle area. So depending on my lens, I'm usually at f5.6 to sometimes f10. Uh, when I'm shooting in a studio, that's going to be the sharpest image uh, for my portraits. So the way studio lighting works is pretty simple. You're going to have something attached to the top of your camera, usually on the hot shoe. And this is going to talk to these lights so that when you press the shutter button, it will trigger the strobes. Pretty simple, right? But there's a few different ways that this is done. And if you're depending on the studio you're working in, they're going to have a different setup. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about those really quickly. So one system you might frequently see in the photo studio is this kind of power pack system. So this is a system where all of your lights plug into this and your camera plugs into this and this controls all of the lighting. So if you have a light, you would take its cable and then that would just plug into here. And then you will take your sync cable and that plugs in. And this cable goes to my camera on the hot shoe so when I press the trigger, it activates the lights that are hooked up to this power block. Now I like that I can have this power block uh, or this power pack near me. And if I'm using multiple lights, it's really easy for me to adjust this power settings of the lights because I have these nice physical dials. Another advantage is that because the power is all into this power block, 
that the head of the lights are usually a lot smaller and lighter and that's going to make booming your lights overhead a lot easier just because the lights are just lighter in general but some of the disadvantages are that one this thing is ugh, pretty heavy and two because all your lights are plugged into this and your camera's plugged into this and this is plugged into the wall if you're using three or four lights you just have cables kind of running all over the place and it can look messy and it can also be kind of a tripping hazard so the other really common system you're going to see in a photo studio is the kind of mono head wireless system and in this system uh, the power is built into the light so it's all just one unit that way this just plugs into the wall and then that's it and then you'll usually have some kind of wireless trigger that will go on top of your camera and then when you press the shutter the light will go off now, um, the advantage of this is there's just one wire going into the wall and you've got a wireless uh, trigger on your camera. So you have a lot fewer wires in the set. And a lot of these you can actually have battery powered. So if these are battery powered, then you will be completely wireless. You won't have cables and wires running all over your set. Now, I guess one of the disadvantages is that because the power is in the head, the head is a lot heavier. It's a lot bigger and it just it can make booming things a little harder just because now you're really having to muscle up, you know, a C stand or a light stand to get this thing on a boom overhead. Um, and this is going to vary brand to brand. But for example, depending on the trigger, you know, sometimes you can't really see like in this older version, you can't see the power levels of your lights. Uh, this one you can but another thing too is like changing the energy of the lights or changing the power of your lights just takes a few more like button clicks you know it's going to require me to like press the button a few times maybe make sure i'm on the right channel make sure i have the right light selected whereas on a previous power block method all the dials are just right there so it's really fast and easy for me to quickly change the lighting on my lights and so it's not really one is better than the other it's just more preference so as you can see, shooting in a photo studio is really not that difficult once you kind of understand how the equipment works. Now, of course, every studio is going to have different brand of lights, different systems, but they all pretty much work exactly the same. You have something on your camera somehow attached to the lighting via wire or wireless. And when you press that shutter button on your camera, it triggers the lights and that's it. That's all. It, that's how it works. So um, I know we didn't really do too much in this video as a way of shooting. But in the next few videos, we're gonna actually put some modifiers on these lights. We'll get some models in the studio and I'm gonna show you how I take my portraits, how I do my lighting, how I work with the models, uh, my general workflow, because I often shoot tethered, so how that works. And then, um, yeah, don't worry, we'll still be doing some Affinity Photo retouching tutorials, but now we have an added element where we actually show you how I shoot my photos, then I can show you how I edit them. So um, until then guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.